Praise the Lord. This is the I Bible School. I'm Gary Bailey, and this is Lesson 46 on a life of prayer. We're talking about how to pray for the lost coming up, so you don't want to miss it. Glory to God. Uh, we've already uh, had a, uh, a lesson on effectively praying for the lost, but I want to uh, look at it a little differently and, and talk about uh, uh, how to pray for the lost. And uh, we'll cover some things here that we didn't cover in the last, uh, in that previous lesson. Uh, but uh, the lost are a priority with God. Now, if we don't pray for the lost, who's going to pray? We need to stand in that ministry of intercession. And when we speak of intercession, certainly you can pray for believers and you can pray for needs in their life and to uh, help them in their walk with God. But uh, it's so valuable and so important for us to pray for sinners. And really, when we think of intercession, we think primarily of praying for the lost and praying for sinners in intercession. But if we don't pray, who will pray? Isaiah 59 and verse 16 tells us, And he saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore his arm brought salvation unto him, and his righteousness it sustained him. We make the mistake that prayer is just for a select few, when rather God calls all of us to intercede. Now again, only God can do the work of God, and he works through our prayers. Uh, concerning the lost, we're praying that they might be saved. Uh, for surely, without prayer, they cannot be saved. I want you to think about that for a moment. Uh, without our prayers, how are the lost going to uh, be saved? You know, two things that we can pray for the lost. Number one, pray that laborers come across their path. Number two, pray that the blinds be taken off their eyes. Because if we don't pray that that spiritual bondage be broken over their life, how will they receive? You know, the Bible tells us that the lost in their current situation are under the devil's authority. In John chapter 8, 44, Jesus spoke of the scribes and Pharisees. He says, you are of your father, the devil, and everyone without Christ, anyone without Christ is in that position where he takes on his spiritual heritage from the devil. He's under Satan's authority. Uh, in Acts chapter 26, let's, uh, let's look here. Acts 26, and starting at verse 17. He says, uh, look what he says about Paul speaking. And he says, delivering thee, uh, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles and unto whom now I send thee um, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. So uh, we're here to deliver men and women from the power of Satan. Uh, and they literally are under the influence and under the power of Satan. They're, they're literally uh, bound by him. And that's why prayers must ascend to heaven for, for them. Another scripture in Colossians 1 and verse 13. He says, uh, Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. So we were bound by the devil and needed someone to pray for us and pray us out from under that uh, spiritual bondage. Uh, the Bible tells us that uh, that people are energized or empowered by the devil. And uh, 
that's uh, something that has to be changed. He says, wherein in time past, you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. So people are literally energized by, by Satan uh, under his influence, walking according to the prince of the power of the air. Um, we are coming in in prayer to deliver them from a strong man's house. Mark chapter uh, 3 and verse 27. Let's look what he has to say here about the strong man's house. Mark 3 and 27. He says, no man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he will first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house. And that's exactly what we do in prayer, spoiling the strong man's house. Men are held captive by Satan in prison, and prayer will deliver them. That's the current situation of a lost person. They are literally prisoners of war held by Satan. And uh, we see that in Isaiah chapter 14. Let's look over here. Isaiah 14 and uh, looking at verse 17. That made the world as a wilderness. He's talking about Satan here. And... Uh, what Satan had planned to do. He says, I'll ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. That's verse 14. And uh, he goes on, the Bible says, Thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Then they, uh, they that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof? that open not the house of his prisoners. Look at that. That open not the house of his prisoners. Satan has the lost in prison. Uh, they're blinded. Uh, otherwise, they would run to the gospel. Uh, so we, we need to keep that uh, in, in mind, what the devil is doing in, uh, in the earth. Then 1 John 5 and verse uh, 19. He says, And we know that we're of God, and the whole world, think about that, the whole world lieth in wickedness. The lost are blinded. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 and 4, and we're uh, familiar with this passage of Scripture, where it says, The God of this world has blinded their minds, lest they should believe. Uh, let's uh, turn here to chapter uh, chapter 4. And looking at verse 3, he says, But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Why, why is it hid to them that are lost? In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. They're literally blinded and cannot see what God has prepared for them. So first, uh, in general, the lost have a general and universal incapacity to comprehend salvation. They couldn't get saved if they wanted to. They don't understand it. Uh, first Chronicle or First Corinthians chapter two. Let's look over there. First Corinthians chapter two and verse fourteen. He says, uh, let's, uh, "Next page here." He says, "But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned." Uh, this word foolishness. Uh, uh, means uh, uh, means moronic or it's taken uh, 
uh, from the word moron. It's where we get our word moron. It's the highest class of mental deficiency. It's above imbecile or idiot. And this is a situation that the devil has, has uh, put upon the lost. That they're, they're in a situation where they, they can't know unless someone takes the blinds off their eyes. Prayer must be the number one priority in our lives. Prayer must be first and foremost. In 1 Timothy 2, and verses 1 through 4, I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. This is God's desire. He wants all men to be saved, and in order for that to happen, prayer has to go up. How shall we pray for the lost? We, we need to pray in a unified prayer. In Deuteronomy 32 and verse 30, How should one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to fight, flight, except their rock had sold them, and the Lord had shut them up? Matthew 18 and 9. Again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. We need to agree in prayer. Uh, there ought to be a unity of intercession. God finds doubly rare and he'll bless it mightily. In other words, uh, intercession is rare enough. But uh, if we can unify ourselves in prayer and intercession, God will bless that prayer mightily. Uh, we need to pray specifically in four areas. For the lost person, for the soul winner, for the word of God to go forth, and for revival. Uh, the individual can pray, sanctify and bless, uh, convict, illuminate, uh, and uh, pray that the lost be saved. In Luke 19 and 10, a divine preparation of the unsaved to bring him into position for salvation. Let's look over there. Luke 19 and verse 10. For the Son of Man is come to save, seek, and to save that which was lost. And, of course, that's what we're set to do. That's what we're called to do. Praise God. There's a divine preparation of the unsaved to bring them into a position for salvation. Uh, now, concerning the soul winner, we're to uh, be equipped with power. Acts chapter 1. And uh, verse 8. Uh, we're to have boldness. Acts 4.31. We're to pray with wisdom. Proverbs 11.30. We're to pray with zeal. Colossians 4.12 and 13. We're to pray with compassion. Some having compassion. Making a difference. In Jude 22 and 23. We're to pray with a divine insight. Jeremiah 33.3. Uh, we're to pray with an utterance in Ephesians 6 and verse 19. Paul said, and pray for me that utterance might be given unto me. Give me something to say. Praise God. We're to pray for uh, the individual, uh, for the lost person. We're to pray for the soul winner. And thirdly, we're to pray for the word that the word would have free course, that it would be unhindered, Second Thessalonians 3 and verse 1, that it would be glorified, highly esteemed, praise God, Second Thessalonians 3 and 1, that the word would multiply, Acts chapter 12 and 24, that the word might prevail, Acts chapter 19 and verse 20, uh, that it might be effective in Acts 14 and 1, Isaiah 55 and 11, and then finally, we have to pray for revival. 
2 Chronicles 7, 14. If my people are called by my name and they'll humble themselves and pray, I'll turn and heal their land. If they shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Oh, we need revival. We desire revival and outpouring of, of God in the earth. Praise the Lord. Isaiah 40, or Job, sorry, uh, Job chapter 42 and verse 10. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Praying for others. We need to pray for the lost, the individual. Pray by name. Mention them by name. Pray for the soul winner, those that are going out and winning souls. Pray that the word would have free course and be unhindered, glorified, and multiplied. Pray that revival come uh, to your city, to your state, to your nation. Praise God. Um, we need to develop a burden to pray for others. Job prayed for his friends. Uh, Jonathan Edwards considered revival as a major means God used to extend his kingdom. God wants revival to take place. Praise the Lord. Um, we need to use these weapons in prayer. The blood is a mighty weapon in prayer. We ought to plead the blood of Jesus over the lives of the lost. Plead the blood of Jesus over the lives of soul winners. Um, Satan has been completely destroyed. He now operates only by deception. When we plead the blood, we remind Satan that he is defeated. And finally, uh, this great weapon, the blood, then we have the weapon of the name of Jesus. It's very powerful in the realm of the spirit. He is Lord. Uh, of creation and he is Lord by creation praise God not that he was created being he's God but uh, uh, he is the Lord of all in uh, Colossians chapter 3 and verse 16 let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom praise God he is Lord by crucifixion. Amen. He's Lord by crucifixion. In, uh, in Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 and 15. For as much then as the ch children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Praise God. And he certainly is... Uh, uh, powerful by his kingship in first peter 3 and verse 22 who has gone to heaven and is on the right hand of god of angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him praise god well god uh, is good the word of god uh, goes forth in power. Satan is stripped of his power. Uh, praise God. And we have authority over all the power of the devil. Through praise, through fasting, through the love of God. The ultimate strategy is for the church to continually pray. Let me say it again. The ultimate strategy is for the church 
to continue to pray for the lost. In Acts 1 and 14, these all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. And we know that on the day of Pentecost, 3,000 were saved. A few days later, 5,000 were saved after the uh, the crippled man uh, rose up and walked. And uh, praise God. We need to pray and pray with diligence for the lost. God bless you. We have one more lesson on prayer, so join us again for a life of prayer.